But I'm going to have the opportunity to introduce you a little bit now to the process of recall and what are the requirements and expectations, both from a federal and state perspective, as well as from the buyer perspective. But uh, I, I know everybody in the room has, uh, within your childhood, have been vaccinated. You've had your immunization. You have tried to do everything you can to prevent a disease or to prevent uh, a bad situation. And so in some ways, I want you to kind of look at the whole recall process, both in prevention and preparation. So when we're talking about the process today, keep those two things in mind. Now, Jill did a wonderful job in giving you the background. As far as our state is concerned, uh, the state has had a Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act since 1905, believe it or not. Uh, so in different states, there are different agencies involved. For the state of Florida, the food safety program is under the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services under our Florida statute, the Food Safety Statute, Chapter 500. But it is very similar to the Federal Food and Drug Cosmetic Act, and the state has adopted various portions of the regulations under Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations to make sure that we're consistent with the federal government and that if you have a state inspector to be involved in your firm, that you're being looked at under the same standards and requirements. So as we well know, the Food Safety Modernization Act was the first rewrite of the federal food safety statutes since 1906. So it has really dramatically changed the way we act to food safety hazards to a preventive mode from a reaction mode. In fact, that's what this whole recall workshop is about, is to focus on your prevention and your preparation. Now, as far as prevention, the main thing to just keep in mind is the whole issue of food safety laws is to prevent human illness. So we're going to do anything we can to have a food safety culture in our firms from top down. And that will be the very best thing that you can do. But also, we've got to ensure that we have uh, preparation. And I was so excited to see the mix of folks here today, because I think it's very representative of the team you all have to have within your own uh, issues. We've got food safety directors here. We've got the people involved on the ground with making sure the firm has all your food safety practices in place. We have communications. We have legal. We have production. We have federal representatives. Uh, we have associations with all their information. We have basic suppliers in the food safety area. This is this room is very representative of the team that you all have to have within your firms to be prepared to deal with a recall. Uh, you've got to know the operation of your own firm. You've got to know the requirements. But also, you have to know all of these people. Uh, you know, Jill had asked several of you earlier a question, did you know what was the predominant uh, cause of recalls? And I won't embarrass you by having you hold up your hand, but how many people have Mike Arts and Jill's cell number in your phone, or my cell number, or Lisa's cell number, or FDA, uh, Nisha Alonso, or Nelson Venario? You need us in your phone right now because, as you know, with your children or your family, you don't get sick during the day uh, during a convenient time, it's going to be nights and weekends when you suddenly get a call 
that you might have a product that is going to be involved in a recall. So it's going to be kind of difficult to find somebody then unless you have all of their contact information ahead of time. So as far as the next two presentations, I'm delighted that we have both representatives of our federal government, the Food Drug uh, Administration, as well as the buyer community and some very key people that you need to get to know during lunch, make sure you introduce yourself to them, make sure that you've got their contact information because it's going to be very important to you. And going back a little bit relative to coordination and preparation, I want you to know that the states are likewise doing the same thing with the federal government. Right now, the federal government has um, had a very large contact, contract or cooperative agreement with our National Association of State Departments of Agriculture, of which I'm delighted to be working with them on the FSMA uh, implementation. And 42 state departments of health and agriculture are going to be involved in implementing those new rules. And we have a major consortium of those states that will be meeting in Altamont Springs very shortly for FDA to make sure to prepare the states as to what's going to have to be done, both with common sense and to ensure that all the requirements are met. So the preparation is not just on your end, but it's also a coordination with state and federal government in preparing them. Our two guests from FDA that will be our next presenters today, you have a sheet in a nice folder that they have given you, Food Safety Begins on the Farm, the Cornell document uh, that will be uh, very important to you, and you also have two uh, business cards there. Florida is delighted that we have an entire FDA district to ourselves. We have so many farms and so much that FDA does in this state. We have the Florida district that's located in Maitland, right two blocks away from the FFEA office. So, you know, if you're ever in Maitland visiting FFEAs, go on over and introduce yourself and, and see if Nisha or Meredith or Nelson are, are involved or in the office at that time. Florida has two recall officers. Uh, we're delighted that Meredith Cobb uh, was at the first uh, workshop, and at this workshop, we're delighted to have Nisha or Alonzo. Nisha comes from a, a nursing background. She's been with FDA for 28 years. She was in the headquarters. She was head of the San Juan Puerto Rico office. Uh, she's actively involved as one of our state's recall officers, and she will be making the presentation. And we're delighted to have her. Be sure you know her before you leave. <laughs> but I want to also introduce Nelson Venario, who is the emergency response coordinator for the state of Florida. He is the man that can tell you anything about all the requirements of the reportable food registry. And as such, you would either be calling one of them or Meredith, if you ever have any questions, ask them up front now before you ever get into a situation. They're very open and available, and they will likewise be delighted to talk to you up front. We know after the first workshop we had down in Belglade in October that Meredith Cobb got several phone calls from folks after the workshop asking her questions as to, okay, if this is the situation, what would I do? How would I handle it? So the first presentation as far as government expectations will be made by Nisha Alonso. And then I'm going to go ahead and introduce our second presentation because it just flows. And we're delighted to have Michael Robertson here. And Michael, I've known for many years, and I can't remember how many now, but he's director of corporate assurance for Publix, one of our very major buyers of fruits and vegetables. 
and uh, Michael before, gosh, have you been, have you been with Publix 12 years? But before Publix, I knew him from Walt Disney. Now talk about people that deal with a lot of fruits and vegetables and serving the public from many nations around the world. And uh, uh, Michael was with Frank Chiani before he went to Walmart and then uh, headed up the group there at Publix before that with Albertsons, before that with uh, some poultry processors. He has full background and knowledge, and he's going to give the second presentation as to, okay, what does a major buyer expect of produce? So we have represented in the room today berries, other sorts of, all sorts of fruits and vegetables, suppliers. We've got a great mix. So if I may now uh, call upon Nisha Alonso to tell us about the process and what FDA expects as far as the federal requirements. Let's welcome Nisha. So like you know, my name is Nais Alonso. I work for the Food and Drug for the last 28 years. Since 1995, I've been working as a RICO coordinator. And I deal with all kind of RICOs. Uh, at the beginning, I used to deal a lot with uh, food, vegetables, all kind of, I used to be a food in investigator. Uh, now I'm kind of like backing up and do a lot of medical devices, uh, and I let Meredith do the food. Um, but food have always been very uh, dear to my heart, because everybody knows we all eat. I mean, you cannot, you know, if, if there is a, a drug, a pharmaceutical, you might use it, you may not. A medical device, you may use it, you may not. You may use cosmetic or you may not, but you have to eat. So food is very, very important. We're not gonna stop eating because something happened. And it's not moving. No. So I'm just gonna go a little bit quick and give you, you know, the objectives, what we're gonna be learning today, what is gonna be the recall definition, the process, how we terminate it, and what kind of documents we need. So the um, 21 CFR part seven is stated what is a recall. A recall is a removal or correction. We either take it out of the market or we can correct it through putting a new label or something else that we can do. Each recall is different. You can have the same product, you can be the same firm, you can have the same problem, and you're running two different recalls in one year, and they're run different. So don't, don't think that a recall is a cookie cutter thing. It is not, there's always other factors that they're involved. We use the same uh, scientific information, but it can be done, the process can be different. So it's a removal or correction of a marketed product. The product has to be already in distribution. If it's a recall from Publix, and Publix have it in the public warehouse, and they have full control of it, and they receive 100 boxes, and they have 100 boxes that they haven't gone out, it's not a recall, it's a market withdrawal. If public put two of them in one of the stores, it's a recall. They put one of them in one of the stores, it's a recall. It's already went out of their control, even though it's selling in the same store. So the FDA have love that we can do a voluntary recall, which is what we want with the firms who want to work cooperatively with them, or we can go on to other legal actions that we have um, to take other legal action. In all my time, I think I have done less than 20, which is pretty good. Um, and again, it needs to be inter interstate market. So RICO classification, you have that on, on, on your binder. Class one, what we consider a class one. Class one is our worst one. Uh, an example of a class one RICO, 
you eat something and you become blind. There's no way back. That will be a class one RICO. Class two RICO, you eat something, you become blind, but in six months you'll be okay. That's a class two RICO. You will get better eventually. It will not do any permanent damage. And there's no permanent uh, going back after death in class one. Class three, we consider that any label deficiency, any minor things, uh, unless it's an allergen, that we consider that labeling. But you know, like you, you put it in metric and it's in ounces, you put it in ounces, it's a metric. Um, you only use, uh, I think only Puerto Rico can put the labels in Spanish. Here you have to put it in English and Spanish, but you cannot, you, or English only, but you cannot do Spanish only. I don't care if you are sending everything to Miami. Had to be of both languages. So, um, and we have that a lot with uh, Oriental food, uh, Korean food, Japanese, Chinese. Uh, now we have a whole bunch of food from Egypt uh, that if we try to read it, unless you know the language, you don't know what it is. So those are our three classifications. The one that we have the most is class two, few class ones, but those are the ones that they go to press. The impact that you will have is not gonna be only to your business, because your impact is gonna be, your brand name is already in the news, financial impact, economical impact to you, um, loss of sales in the future, and your product will be kind of like, oh no, let me pick this one now. So what we try to do is, the way that, that we do it is, it's a voluntary, hey, we find out this, so our company is now caring for you as a consumer, so we're taking this out of the market. It sounds really good. We care for you. Instead of FDA told this company that they needed to recall this because they didn't want it to do it. Who you think that they're gonna be liking more? The one that goes, hey, we love you guys. We find out this, and we're doing really quick. We're trying to get it out of the market. We haven't found any death, any sickness, but we found out in our samples, or we found out this. And all with abundance of caution, we're taking care of you. So the impact have to be, you know, always taken in consideration by the firm. FDA doesn't take that into consideration but we try to help you as much as possible. What are the reasons when we initiated a RICO? Uh, it could be firm initiated, you find something on your own, customer complaint to you or to us. Um, you have a reportable, a reportable food registry. Or it could be FDA initiated, we collected sample, we collected uh, undercover sampling, we have any problem during the inspections, the consumer complaint, FISMA, I mean, we have a whole set of things. Third party sampling, we go and we go as a, we buy our undercover samples and we don't tell anybody who we are, we go, oh yeah, look, what they have, and they haven't told us anything, things like that. So it's very good that your company have a way to validate those crops, validate those samples. Um, we understand that you cannot sample every single blueberry that comes out of your farm. But you know, as a group, you know what that, that crop came out from what line, from what field, from everything. So you have some kind of control on it. On RFR, Nelson is gonna tell you a little bit of RFR. Because that's the way that when you find a problem, that's the first information that you have to give to us. Before you call recalls, the RFRs have to be filled out. Yes. I know that you don't want to get in here. That's your first immediate response if you discover You're in the middle of the camera. <laughs> if I have to be here. 24 hours. And if you have some doubt about it, 
Sakoda. Sakoda. Um, <laughs> try, try to remember. Then we look for your response, and that's when a recall will be initiated with that. So they kind of go hand in hand. What I try to do is find out the root cause analysis of why the problem occurred. And that's why I go back and forth a lot. I've dealt with you guys a little bit in the past. That's when we go back and forth and try to figure out uh, the root cause analysis. How far or how long this has been going on? Any end and beginning steps that you can tell me, hey, I prevented, this is my last clean out, this is my last sample result, this is when this occurred. So we try to, to narrow the problem and mitigate the, the issue. So the first thing that you do, you know, when you, you find any uh, samples, any complaint, anything like that, just, if you want, just give us a call. Give us a call, tell us, hey, we're giving you a heads up, this is what's happening, what are the next steps that we need to do? And then we can continue the conversation back and forth with it. So you contact either us, you submit your RFR, uh, yeah, and I've seen a whole bunch of RFRs that they just like, we receive them and it, it's closed. It's not ours. No, 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 no. They don't have to do anything. No, no. The RFR is also going to ask you, are you going to recall? And you put, yeah, no, you leave it in blank. And I say, like, oh, they leave it in blank. Nelson, call them. <laughs> what are they going to do? What happened? Did they find out the cost? Did they don't know what's going on? Things like that. Then you're going to submit a draft of your recall communication or your press release or both. Recommendation to you guys. Some of them, yeah, I see some of them that when a recall hit the firm, they're chickens without a head. They don't know what to do. This is the first time, hey, the wheels are already being in place. Make a binder from your store from your place, from your farm, from your commodity, right? What can happen, what can happen to this product run? Uh, it can, this product is propensal salmonella, to pesticides, to this, to that, da, da, da. Put different scenarios. And what is gonna happen, what is your action after those scenarios? Yeah, we know that uh, if we get salmonella, this is what we're gonna do. These are the procedures, we're just gonna follow it. You can always change it and put more, take less, whatever. Uh, this is the way that we're going to prepare the communication in case of salmonella. You already have it ready. You just tweak it when you have a new one or if you ever need it. This is what's going to happen if we have an allergen. This is our communication. This is our communication if we have uh, pesticides, sulfites, whatever. And this is our press release communication samples from our firm, from different stages. When something happens, you don't have to say, oh, let me see, am I gonna, no, you already have it. You're just going like, okay, this apply, this don't apply, this, let me put this, no. It's already done. It's not time consuming. It's, it's, this is, if it's a class one, it's an action time. I need this information within 24 hours. And I'm gonna be like emailing you, I haven't received it, I haven't received it, I haven't received it. I'm gonna send an investigation to your field to get it. So it, it's good for you to get it ahead of time, get all that product out if it needs to be out. So you contact me or Meredith, you submit your RFR to Nelson, it goes to headquarters, it goes to us. You submit your draft recall letter, and we give you suggestions. We say like, well, maybe you don't need to put this, you, maybe it will be better if you say it this way. It's, we always try to make it generalized, um, then you submit your recall information, which is the, a little questionnaire that we send you with everything. When did you find out? What happened to the lots before, the lots after? Are they okay? They're not okay? What happened? All that. And then you guys conduct in your recall. 
the law stated that if it's the manufacturing fair responsibility to do your RICO, regardless if you're talking to me or not. I'm gonna give you guidance, but you cannot wait for me. You have to keep going. You have to contact your firm. You have to, even if it's my phone, hey, you know, put it on hold. We're gonna send you a letter now. We're gonna give you the instructions later. Just put it on hold. Put it in quarantine the product. Do this, do that. You have to be proactive. And then you do your recall. Uh, what information do I submit to FDA? Full detail of the product that's being recalled. I know with products, we always say they go like tomatoes. And I'm like, what kind of tomatoes? Are we talking cherry tomatoes? Are we talking beef cake? Are we talking what kind of tomatoes? Roma tomatoes? I mean, I don't know. You know, what kind of tomatoes? You know what kind of tomatoes you make. You know what kind of blueberries you made. They're just not one type, they're different types. Um, how that tomatoes were packed. Well, it came out of your um, farm in this package. Well, we need to see the package. Maybe that's not what the retail will get it, but we need to see it just in case that we found it. Um, and then we ask you, you know, do, do, do you put any kind of information, you know, uh, any stickers to the, to the fruit? I've seen it's only mangoes. If they're organic, they have all the tickets, things like that. Um, your recall strategy, very important. How are you going to do this recall? Well, we're going to be informing only our distributors. And we're going to go like, why? What is your, your scientific base to only tell the distributors? Are you gonna do only the retail? So are you gonna go all the way down to consumers? So we're gonna go, you know, we're gonna have the conversation and see why the firm thinks this way needed to be done instead of another way. So that's your recall strategy. We're just gonna go to this level. Usually class one, we want, you know, consumers to this level, and this is the why, and this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna send, the strategy we're gonna be, we're sending communications. We're sending a vendor to check it all that. Uh, we send communications, and if they haven't respond to us, we're gonna call them a second time, or we're gonna call them a third time. Um, farm sell, sells a lot to any vendor that comes and, and want to buy one or two pallets of this, and you don't have that information. But we want to know, you know, okay, from, 100 uh, boxes that you created, 20 were sold retails to unknown sellers. We don't have any way to contact them. All that information we need. We need your distribution list. Who do you sell that product to? And then usually we send investigators to do what is called recall audit check and we go to the distributor, okay, now you, who do you sold it to? And if you did any changes to that product and how you're selling it now. Your recall notification letter is the letter that you write to your consignee, to, your, to the people that you sold it. You have to be very specific of what you want them to do. Things like you're talking to a third grader. I want you to take those boxes, get it out of there, and put it in the warehouse, and put a tape saying quarantine, do not sell until I get there. You know, you have to be very specific what you want to do with them. Do you want them to be destroyed in the store? Do you want them to be sent back to you in that? Do you, what is that you want? If you want it to be sent back to you, yeah, put it in quarantine, but put it in refrigerator. Put it on the freezer. Otherwise, you're gonna get mush coming back. So it's very important that you get that information. If they're distributors, and, and they need to go to consumers, you have to put a statement saying that, and I want you to contact everybody that you sold this product and you can send it. Either the same notification that I just sent you a copy of it, or you can send it these other notifications and you can prepare for them with the instructions for them. Press re uh, release, I know they put a couple of examples in there. It's a very generic, goes to the public, if you see this product in your shelf, this is what you need to do. 
And if you need any assistance making any of them, just let me know. So in here we just put part of what we use in the questionnaire, any brand name, any size, any package, lot, manufacturing, UPC, manufacturing distribution information. Uh, we see a lot of them that they go, like, they send us the distribution information and they go, we sent to uh, Johnny's distributor. And they're like, where is Johnny's distributor? Florida? What's, you know, county at least, you know. You had to give me a full address, you had to give me a contact, and you had to give me a telephone number. And if it's possible, how many you sell to Johnny's? Uh, and the product label, if you have any. Your reason for your recall, um, this is due to FDA told us that we have some samples. The samples came positive for salmonella, so we're recalling because of salmonella. Or we found that we have this problem in the farm and all that. You have to understand that anything and everything that you are planting in the farm can happen. That's an open field. So you're gonna have to check not only for uh, bacteria, you have to check for any vector that you have, any raccoons, any uh, uh, rats, anything. Then you have that, then you have your pesticide, what if you put too much? Okay, then you have another problem in there. Uh, what if you are located in this area, and it happens to me that there's a cow farm in here. When it rains, what's gonna happen to that? All that water is going down to your field. We have re big recalls in California because of that. Couldn't figure out what happened. Then the cows were up. Cows were happy eating them, doing their thing. When rain comes, all that water went to the lettuce. So when you do your assessment of what can go wrong in your field, you gotta, you gotta think outside the box. You gotta think what can happen. You can have 20, 30 items, but when, if, and when that happens, you'll be prepared. And this will not take away. This will take probably a year experience to just create something, you know, very robust and when, in, and if you need it, it will be there and in half an hour you'll be almost done. Any illnesses? Did they report anything to you directly? Um, who is going to be my contact? Who am I going to be calling in the firm that can give me all the information that I want? If i calling you and you have to go to her, I don't want to talk to you. I want to go to talk to her. <laughs> to you? I want to talk to you. I want to talk to Amy because uh, she's going to send me all the way back to you anyway. I said, like, why, why? Let me go directly. So I'm going to be talking to you, and you can give me that, that information that I need. And if you don't know it, you tell me, hey, I'll call you back later. Let me find out. So we already talked about the recall strategy. What is the death that you're going to do it? How are you going to be notifying the customers? What are the instructions you're going to give them? The effectiveness check is like if they haven't uh, responded to my emails or my mail or my uh, FedEx or anything, how am I going to go back? Should I go back again and call them? That All that needs to be done. What are you going to be doing with that return product? Are you going to destroy it? Are you going to do something else? Are you going to use it in animals? Can you do that? All that have to go approved by FDA. You cannot just take something and just give it and give it to the pigs. Doesn't work that way. We need to know. Because then those pigs go to the slaughter and guess what? We got another problem. We got you, me, and the USDA. You don't want to deal with both of them at the same time. So we need to know, you know, there's some, don't, some things that you can use, something that you can render, something that you can do other stuff about it. And then your press release. We take all that information and we have five days, less than five days to give it back to headquarters. Headquarters will look at it and give it a classification. 
we don't get the classification in the Florida district or any other district coordinators. We send it to the center. The center will have an SME, which is a subject matter expert. They will review it, and then they will classify depending on the health hazard that it will find. Then they send the classification to us. If it's a class one, you will receive it directly from headquarters. If it's a class two or three, you will receive it from the main office. If it's a class one, you will receive a second notification from me saying that you received this class one letter on this day signed by the commissioner, the associate commissioner of the Center for Food and Safety and Nutrition on this day, I need this information. And then, we go back in here. Customers should be notified. So how you, you know, don't send it a uh, regular post office if you have a class one. It will be done in five days, six days, seven days, and they already have consumed, used. Just, um, you can give a phone call ahead of time and then follow up with, the, I mean, everybody have emails, texts, um, faxes that they can get that communication a lot quicker. And you will have also something that it will tell me that if as an investigator go in a year and say like, did you submit this 30 notification? Yes. Here are the accuser received. The, the little reply form. This is the fax saying that it was received. This is the outlook notification that they received this information on who got it. Always you need to be uh, documented. Your recall notification letter had to be free of promotional and external material. We're just gonna be talking about the recall. We don't want to know that you've been in business for 50 years and you're the greatest thing ever. <laughs> no, that, that shouldn't be. Communication should be very clear. We're recalling, we're recalling this because of this. If you consume this, this type of people can get this, this, and this. At this moment, we haven't report any um, uh, injuries or complaint, or we have. Um, this is the product that we are recalling. It's this, 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 all the description. FDA has been notified, so we're covering that part. And then if you have any sickness or things like that, you can do an MDR or you can uh, report a complaint with FDA. And this is what we want you to do with the product, if you have it. Give it back to the store where you bought it, send it back, destroy it in your house. I mean, whatever uh, you want to do. And again, we will review it. We'll give you some recommendations. Some people take the recommendations, some others don't. But we always want to tell you, hey, if you do it this way, it's gonna be better for you. If you wanna do it that way, you're on your own. Yes. We want you to be as quick as possible. We we no. Well, I mean, we have we have five days for you to have everything sent to headquarters. I send my communication on this day. I did this day. I did. We understand that there's sometimes, you know, like, you, you cannot have a press release in one day. But if you know this on Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning, by Tuesday, I'd be like, when are you going to put your communication? We're going to be very good friends, you know. We're going to be calling you each other. We were always told two hours. Well, it all depends. The problem, what happened, do we have any death? Do we have any uh, uh, miscarriages, if, if it's El Mono? Well, there's some times that we know ahead of time. So, so this is what we are, we, you know, you can have El Mono and we haven't had any complaints, any death, any injuries, nobody's sick in the hospital, and we'll be a little bit more lenient. But if we have somebody who's in the hospital, we got CDC on top of us saying that we got 50 cases nationwide. I want to be seeing that in 20 minutes. Because I had to send it to headquarters, they had to come back and I had to go back to you. Don't get 
Yeah, yeah RFR is RFR. You need to send out communication, uh, and it's mandatory. It's by law. Yes. Right. Yeah. Then you will have a conversation with whatever recall coordinator you got, and we will tell you what time frame we need, depending on what we have. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be putting all your employees online, do you know? <laughs> Yeah. So if you have, if you ever have questions like that, that doesn't meet the definition of what the court will include, you can set it to me. What I'll do is I'll take your description of the problem and I'll submit it to the CISAM risk control group with a whole bunch of smart people in I am, and they'll tell me yes or no. Yeah. Most of the time, we can pretty much tell you because you report that out there. Yeah, you have to report that. And, and the RFR, one more thing is the RFR system is open to body body everybody. Oh, yeah. So we get some yeah. things oh, Lord, yeah. from my desk in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. in the morning. It's like, you should, don't sell this because this is contaminated by aliens and da 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 Oh, Lord, please. <laughs> No. <laughs> they they should only sell organics instead of anything else. No, we. No, yeah. It's like if I do a memoir. Yeah. No, I don't think if if you eat a finger, unless a finger is contaminated with something, I'll make you sick. No, it gross you out. No. Yeah. yeah. We got a we got a frozen fr uh, frog and it was still alive in the bag. He was just like still moving inside the bag. So it was kind of cute. We took it and we put it in the district. Answer all the questions that we ask the companies, and there are other people saying, Hey, Nelson, what's no. going on with this? And we're like, I'm waiting, and they don't want to let go. And let me tell you, for the district, at this moment, last week, we, we are running around 650 recalls. So, but you have to know we have more than food. So we 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 are busy. We are. And not all of them go out to the No, no. They all go to the enforcement report. All of them, and they will be open until the firm will terminate it. So if somebody wants to see all the recalls, the enforcement report, throw the um, the report on Tuesday, and then sometimes you know like. Pages and pages and pages of the new ones that happened during that week. And it's from all the 19 districts that we're running. So imagine I have 600 and something, another district will have another 500, California will have another 1,000. So we're pretty, maybe you don't know how many because you only see one or two of the big ones, but there's always recalls. There's always recalls. There's, there's always something. Anything and everything that it can happen, it will happen to a product at any time. The majority of the recalls these days are voluntary. They're participants. Oh yeah, I uh, since I I've been in Florida since 2012. Um, I haven't have any uh, mandatory. We keep having conversation, you know, like. You will have a conversation with us, you will have a conversation with the district, and if the district thinks, you know, like, they need to recall. We will have, we will invite you to another call with the, with the headquarters. You get every opportunity to do it voluntarily. Yeah, okay. we, will, we will invite you, and I will tell you, you know, this is the reason why we think it should be recalled. And we will give you all the scientific description, all the data, all the thing. And then the firm will decide that, well, yes, we'll recall. No, we're not. Until they voluntarily become involuntary, and then we have mandatory. Well, 
got uh, you guys sometimes target specific things, like they say they will break three covers. Mm-hmm. No carbon fuels and no lock. <coughs> and in those instances, is it different? Is it a different procedure? No. You don't know about that science? Yes. So we get, we get the science from certain scientists throughout the year, mm-hmm. and they're kind of on it. They can give us their take on okay. it. And that just goes on a totally different plane. Yeah, no. What they do, the, those sampling assignment, those sampling assignment is like, okay, on the, May, on the month of May, these are what Florida will produce. Well, let's pick up this one, this one, this one, because last year we picked the other three and they were fine. Well, let's pick up something else. It's just for us to keep you kind of in check, making sure that what you're telling us that everything is fine is still fine. Nah, it, it's all depend on what we got and, and, and the trending that we, we're coming out. We can have high risk product that there's nothing wrong with it, everything is running fine, and then we have all these non high risk that, gee, we have a whole bunch of recalls now on this one that nobody was paying attention to it. But in the event they find something in that lot, you have to have a recall plan in place. Yeah, if you if you gonna hear a conversation, it's like Nate Alonso is on the call for you. Yeah, you know that I'm gonna be talking to you about Rico. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, we're gonna we're gonna go into a conversation. We're gonna go like, hey, you know, like uh, we have a sample. Sample came positive. So what are you guys are gonna do about it? <laughs> yeah, you can tell me. Hey, let me check. If I have any, and I, and I don't say retention because of drugs, if I have any, you know, did we tested this lot, let me see that. But you have to know, we cannot, we cannot test everything into compliance. There is no way that you can test all these things into compliance. Or when we, uh, during the peanut butter, that huge drone, it was about this big. Well, you know, we take samples here, 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 and that's the firm taking sample. What happens if we have the salmonella in this corner? Not in this corner. That makes a difference. So it's like, oh, yeah, well, let me, oh, it came positive. Well, let me try this corner and see, oh, negative. Well, let me send it with this, this one. So once what the, the thinking is, if they have it, they have it. It doesn't matter if you didn't find it in three tomatoes, but I found it in one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, hey, unless you test each one of them, this is, this is the, the face of the beast, you know? This is the issue with this type of commodity. We cannot sample every blueberry, we cannot sample every apple that goes, we cannot sample any bananas. We just sample this, and this is good for you because you know that this commodity that came positive, it came from this line, not from that line. So your record keeping, where you know all that is very important. You gave a different lot number to this one, and to this one, and to this one, and to this one. You only have to call like this. You don't have to do the whole thing. Because I only have for this lot. You don't have lot number? Ah, you don't have to do the whole thing. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a way to see it, how your farm is how you can identify that this product came into this line and it was washing here and after that. I'm gonna ask you, okay, what happened to everything? All the machinery that you used to wash that. If that machinery got contaminated also and you brought something else, so you took samples of it. So when FDA go, not only take samples of this one, it will take samples of this one, that one, that one, and that one, and then when we go, okay, the, it went and it got collected in this bin and it went to this wash and it went to this. So we go, okay, the sample for this lot came first, then the sample for that lot came second, and the sample for that lot came third. Which one was the positive? The first one was positive, the last one was positive, the one in the middle. So we look at a lot of things. It's a lot of trace back that we have to do. Oh. policy for issuing press releases pertaining to recalls or parallel to recalls or even beyond recalls. 
that was back in uh, 2006, where we had bad experience where FDA came out in writing and said, told consumers and Tomato. tomatoes, tomatoes, yeah, that come from the state of Florida and a number of other states. Yes, and of course, it ended up being a serrano pepper from Mexico mm -hmm. situation. So that's a big time swing and a miss. Yes, so, and I wasn't here, but I know. <laughs> I know. What's the protocol for something if something like that were to occur in the future? When when we find that we have a lot of people getting sick and we're doing our trace back, and we're doing an epi back, and we're doing all this, and we are all collecting, okay, what did you eat? What did you have? We're trying to find a common denominator. Uh, I'm guessing, I don't know, that what's happened on that with the tomatoes, we were like, okay, it had to be tomatoes, oh no, but they had to be this, no, but had to, we didn't know. It's, it's the same thing with that, when the dogs are getting sick, with, with the dog food. So FDA went like, hey, anything that comes from China, you're on your own, because we can't pinpoint it. We have tested, we have tested, we have tested, and then this one comes out. Policy is, we're trying to be better. We're trying to have all the facts, not with the um, genome. We know that, for example, we want to, and, and let me use this as an example, we want to recall all the Toyotas. Well, all the Toyotas came back? No. Well, all the Toyotas, uh, Coronas. All the Toyotas, Corona came back, and you have a whole bunch of them. Well, all the Toyotas, Corona, with this VIN number, and then we know that's the one. And there are a whole bunch of them with the same, you know, PFD, same uh, structured DNA. Now we know that. Huh? The yeah. I understand that. And I, and I want that. It's all going to go like, oh, they came positive. So that this is already gone. <laughs> you know, this is already gone. But, but you know things. What we don't know is what you sold this to this. Put the tomato. You sold these raw tomatoes to this distributor, and you don't know what happened to the tomatoes after that. You don't know if the tomatoes were bought to make canned tomatoes, to make salsa, to make this other, that it will extend a shelf life to that. If it's in raw, 14 days, maybe, but if in salsa, a month, two months refrigerated. So we have to see all that. When we walk with you, we have to see all that. You, you can't tell me that, well, we use the cucumbers, but what if they do a cucumber salad? Right, so you eliminate like the farmer from where it came from, and they are clear, you move on to where it was distributed to. Well, we need, we need to find out where that, where that contamination, it, it could be the farming is fine. Farming said everything fine, it was in the manufacturer. But did, did everybody else eat salsa, or everybody else ate raw tomato who got, you know, who got sick? So there is a lot of questions. This is what I'm telling you. A recall is not always the same, no matter what commodity it is, and if it's coming from the same place. You will have salmonella, tomato, and you will work with me in this recall, and three months from now you will work with me in another recall, and it will be done different ways. Because there is always something. Yes, sir. What if I have, well, let's say Mrs. Smith ate one blueberry farm and came in for detail? Can I use that as a recall for her? Yes. Or is it not going to be recalled? Yes. 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 Because they have your blueberries. <coughs> well, we have to make sure that did they get sick because of the blueberries or something else that they ate. So we have to look at everything. When we interview, what else do you have? Hey, immediately after I ate it, I had diarrhea. Well, we need to say, like, well, you know, like, usually this is what happened to blueberries. Uh, they shouldn't have diarrhea until 40 more days. So we, we, are, we are looking at to all of that. Only one person got sick, 
the whole family got sick. Well, what I'm saying is, I'm saying that you pick her complaining to me, would I need to notify her as my food safety coordinator? Every time that you have a complaint, you should take it as serious as possible. Right, right. You take it as a serious, you take your hair to her, and she will investigate what happened. If this is something that it happened here, or this is something that it happened there. Right. I mean, you could have McDonald's before, you know, going to have the blueberries. Yeah. You know, it, it, could, it could be, and this is what we do, the trace back. What else did you eat? Uh, the, you went to the doctor and they took a stool sample and they know that it's salmonella. We we will go if if we have a consumer complaint we will we will ask all these questions to them. Did you went to the doctor? Did the doctor collect a stool sample? Can we get a result of that of the lab? How many people got sick? Everybody in your house got sick. How many people in your house got salmonella? To the gaps are in place, the GFPs are in place, everything's right, all the way to transportation to the store. <laughs> 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 so everything's right, that's the clamshell, clamshell strawberries, and plant okay? Probably. Probably. Transportation people go over to the clamshell and open them and switch them over. Yeah. So now you have somebody getting sick, but it's, it's not the growers. And it's not just your research. It's not necessarily the color either. No. It's not yeah. But you know, you have, you have, how many have, how many clamshells did they have? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had, like, it, 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 it is, it is a problem that exists um, with a multitude of products. Mm -hmm. I'm personally a big fan of anti tampering resistant Thank you. packaging. No, I was just asking what I was going to ask. When is that going to happen? Yeah. Trust me, no, nobody wants to buy something that somebody else already had touched. I don't, I don't want to go to my grapes, you know, and go like, hmm, half of them is missing. You know, it, it, it's something that. It happens that, by the people that will pick from all the grapes to make their bags the perfect bag. It happens. Yeah. I mean, like. <laughs> There is something that. It's watching. I've stopped working in headquarters. <laughs> No. 
I don't, I don't mean like that. Uh, so like our Tampa office will be a like local, local state. Is that what you're saying? Oh, no. They have a lab for them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you know, one other thing is we, we need to look at the commodity. I mean, I, I, I am one who goes like with the avocado. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, for nine. No, no, no. Avocado have a thick skin. I mean, it, there is a possibility, but <sighs> very wrong. Yeah, sure. You have to look at ready to eat, you know, yeah. strawberries, great, things that you're gonna buy onto it. But we need to, if, if they change it, um, everybody gets sick, we have a problem. If one person gets sick, we need to find out what else happened to that person during that day. What did they have? If this is something that if public come and everybody went in through the strawberries and they changed it from the clam thing and I have 50 people complaining that they bought strawberries in Publix in Altamont Spring, uh, we're gonna be there. <laughs> And they usually got complicated, but the best answer is to take it off the shelf. Absolutely. If there's ever any question, we're going to pull it off the shelf, probably based on customer complaints well before. The FDA will know, yeah. It, it's, it's good practice, you know, when in doubt, throw it out. When in doubt, recall it. Get it out before you, you know, there's another type of litigation that it can happen to you, to your farm, to your business, that that it could happen, so. I didn't mean to deviate from your slides. No, thank you. You didn't need to make a question. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, this is this is what we have. This is very informal, and if you have questions, this is the time to do it. So let's just hypothetically say that we have lot codes that are like on the plain shelf, etc. So if a consumer goes to the store and files a complaint, but they, the store can't provide us with the or even what distribution center it came to, or what PO number, or they cannot provide us any tracing information at all. Because I've run into this a few times. That they cannot provide us any traceable information, period. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. When, when you sell it to that store, do you sell it by lot number? Do you have it on your PO? I'll sell 50 boxes, this lot number. Okay, so I know that you sold during this time so many boxes of this blueberry in this lot number, only one lot number, two lot number, three lot number, I don't know. However you sold it to that store, I will know why you sold it and how many lots you sold it. So I will go from those one, two, three, five lots that you sold to that store in that period of time and then trace back, check with the consumer. What happened? Do we have any idea? Do they still have any of those lots in there that I can collect samples? And if they do, I will collect samples. If they came out negative, I then it's something else. It will not be. You probably will not be able to do it for that particular, but you can be able to do it for that store. He bought in this store, and you only sold three lots. Then you only have three lots to look back. Well, and how do you like wish, though? How do you know they're not going to do it for that Where exactly? Blueberry? I just had a consumer <laughs> inquiry say that she got sick on the blueberries and then said, well, I can't even definitively say it was the blueberries that made me sick because I didn't buy your blueberries. I bought somebody else's. Yeah. Then why are you, then why are you calling me? Yeah. <laughs> I think the individual consumer complaints are just a whole other yeah. issue. Yeah. Well, she, she, that would work entirely, but you know, I, I, we're trying to learn as much as you can about the recall process, yeah. but don't put individual consumer complaints in that bucket. Deal with them, deal with them thoroughly, but don't.
Yes. No. And, and just, just don't leave it uninvestigated. You know, just open an investigation, see what it is. If it's inconclusive, if it's inconclusive. I mean, like, we cannot make up, you know, results. We couldn't figure out what made this person ill. We didn't have the lot, we didn't have the office, she's not sure, and you just put your findings on it. It, it, you need to document it, but yeah, we got uh, three complaints. Uh, no, they were not ours, we know. Well, how do you know? Where is the documentation that you check? That's what we want to know, that you did something about it, and then we review it, and then we review it and say, like, hey, but did you check this? Something that you might miss. Two eyes will see better than, than you know, two people who will see better than, than one. We might give you something that we know from another example that we have that you might use it in the future. Things like that. Yes, I just yeah. the multitude of complaints that we get. Um, it's not as much as we got. I know, it's not <laughs> as many as you. Okay, so no, yeah. we're gonna go one by one now. <laughs> A lot of times, I'm sorry, I, we take everything seriously. A lot of times it's somebody that wants something for free. And it is very, I mean, it is overwhelming, overwhelming prevalent in certain areas of the state that, oh, so-and-so will send you free stuff if you have all the complaints. So we, we investigate every single one, um, and we have had repeat offenders. <laughs> we keep documentation on everybody that's, that's, that's had these complaints. So, yes, we, we take them all seriously, but more often than not, so this is the third time that you have a complaint about this fruit. Maybe you need to get another grocer. To, um, I don't know. Not only that, when I when I go to the customer, where did you bought this? I bought it in row 35, da 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 da. Hey, I don't know what those strawberries are then. Yeah. We sold 20 pallets to unknown, you know, truckers. Of, uh, I call it trunk sellers. You know, so we 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 ask these questions. Where did you buy it? Did you buy it in a store? Did you buy it in a corner? You know, like because somebody was selling it in the street, and there were three bucks for the flat, and you took it. There is no guarantee that those were the ones that you got. They can, and we have a lot of that with. Uh, Bins that they steal, you know, the spicy bins that they steal, and then you see it someplace else, and they're like, God, that, that's only from Maryland, and why is here it's in Florida? So things like that. We always ask the question. We 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 will put the burden on the on the facts. If any if at the A get involved, we will ask all those questions. We will do. Termination of recalls, very important. Don't leave me those recalls open. I have a whole bunch of recalls open from very uh, commodities of fruits and vegetables. Uh, I need to know that you consider the law says the termination is when the firm consider that they had done everything possible to get all this product out of the market and we will verify with our uh, recall audit checks and things like that and you tell me, hey, uh, we, we check, we did everything, we, we talked to our customers, we sent two notifications to the one that we couldn't contact. Uh, the product is, uh, we pick up so many back, the other ones were, we think that they were already consumed, we, we consider this recall terminated. We will review it, and if we think that it's terminated, that you have done everything possible to do it, we will terminate it, close it, your en uh, enforcement report will be as terminated, not as open. 
And many firms look at those enforcement reports, checking if you have anything. And if you have an open one from 2012 and it's still open in 2017, it doesn't look that good. So we need to follow through from opening to termination with us. Resources, the best resources that you have is us. Give us a phone call. Uh, we want to do a recall uh, manual. Can you help us? We want to do some scenarios. Can you tell us what the FDA think about these scenarios? Do we want to, uh, we have a recall. What are we gonna be doing? We have this issue, we have this problem, we have this consumer complaint. Then give us a call, then we will be talking about the FDA recall questionnaire 21 CFR. Um, the methods of conducting the recall effectiveness check is it, that is, you know, like if they haven't, you send the, the FedEx and they haven't respond, give it a call back, what's going on, we send you this on this day, things like that. Here is our contact, Meredith and me. Uh, we have blackberries that were not put in there, but they are in the little, um, yeah, and the little printout uh, with our business card, our blackberries are there. Uh, we have to use, <laughs> they also have to be 24 seven. Uh, unfortunately, I have to. So you can call us at any time. Um, um, here's my information. If you have any other questions, send me an email, send me a text, send me a pin if you have a blackberry, pin to pin, you know. Just, just talk to me. It's not about, you know, it's good to know. It's good to make, you know, like help you. I will always be an, a regulatory agency. But, you know, I, I will tell you, are you gonna recall? <laughs> and, you know, it's not like, are you going to recall? So it's, you know, we will be working in a very, you know, joyful way, you know, as, as much as we can. As, as, as painless as possible that I can do this. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, my joyful is only th thirty more months, and I'll be retiring. So, oh, <laughs> yes, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much.